welcome back to another movie reaction. Today we're going to be straying away from the horror uh, and be taking a dive into a retrospective which is 1997's Perfect Blue which for people that don't know is a anime. Uh, more on the psychological thriller side uh, as that's one of my favourite genres aside from obviously horror. And people probably want to know my stance on anime or whether I do generally enjoy it or not because uh, I know a fair few people don't like anime that much, uh, but I tend to like a certain genre of anime. Uh, for example, I'm not the biggest fan of Dragon Ball and Naruto and Hunter x Hunter. Like, I obviously have watched them and I do like them, but my cup of tea for anime is the more psychological horror style, like something like Perfect Blue that we're watching today, or Akira or Battle Angel. Uh, Ghost in the Shell, Cowboy Bebop is one of my favourites, you know, I'm more on that side of the anime spectrum rather than just people screaming and fighting, <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of that. And yeah, right before we get into it, I do want to say that this is not the dub version, I don't even know if a dub version exists for Perfect Blue, so this will be in Japanese and it will be subs of English obviously, so if you guys aren't a fan of that, you know, obviously I apologise, but I don't think a dub English exists for Perfect Blue. I've tried to look for it just to make it easier for people who have never experienced anime, but I have struggled to find one. But without any more rambling, if you guys do enjoy this, make sure you like and sub, and we get right into it. I still love late 80s to 90s anime because it's all hand-drawn. I just love the graininess it has. So I'm pretty sure that's like early day Power Rangers. I'm pretty sure. It's also uh, indicative to how much this inspired like Black Swan, which is another pretty hard-hitting movie. And this movie is basically that's influence, heavily influenced from this. It's also a good commentary on like the teen pop idol too, this movie definitely has that. Also, like, Toxic Fans as well is heavy in this too. Right, that's right. She wants to leave the music business and become an actress. That's right. Because she pretty much hates being a singer. And she wants to find another avenue. But there's creeps in all professions, that's why she wants to leave. But yeah, there's pretty much creeps that follow her in her acting career too. Security, get the security on this guy. They're gonna start a riot. Absolute mayhem. Just say it. But this always kind of happens with bands in general when they break up. Like, I think the Beatles is probably the most prominent one where people just went mental from that. It's really weird. The soundtrack's good in this too. <laughs> I 
This also reminds me of a story, I forgot who it was, the actress, but someone rocked up to her house with a gun, it was like a crazy fan. I forgot who it was, I'll pop it up now if I remember. But this is pretty similar in the tone of what that real life story is about. Yeah, it's probably shit. <laughs> That's why she wants to leave. Right. The pop idol's ruining her. The weirdo shit begins. I don't think it's your mum. That's gonna be pretty scary. The fax machine too. Because it's slowly printing that out. I mean, this is just another cesspool of depression as well though, the film industry. <laughs> Oh yeah, nice. So it's like Ed Gein. Hopefully he doesn't make them do a hundred takes like, like Kubrick. Okay, so she's up next. She only has one line. So yeah, now she's going to get like paranoia and distress. She thinks everyone's laughing at her. She only has one line though, so it shouldn't be that difficult. <laughs> so yeah, it's like anxiety. <laughs> oh, I bet you there's a lot of fan mail. <laughs> Oh, so he's not going to spoil the movie. Oh, he hasn't even written the script yet? Wait, what? They're just doing it on the fly? Yeah, see, so they're probably not going to allow Mimia to do more lines just because she's kind of blacklisted into just a pop idol. Oh, okay, so she got a fan letter. Lucky she didn't get to that note and open it, but it's still a shit situation. I still love these shots though, they're so good. So they tried to cover it up, that's a bit shady on them, I guess. Okay, so it wasn't a real bomb, that's right. It was more like a fake, probably like a little gunpowder or some shit in it. So this is like a weird fan fiction, right? It's like a crappy pasta, I guess. Right, so that's what she was buying at the start, so someone's clearly stalking her. Such an iconic shot here as well. And that's her line. And I love how that's a reoccurring line, like that's her only line in the movie and she kind of delivers that a lot in this movie. 
今どきアイドルがアピールする場所自体がないんだよ今が生き残れるかどうかの選択なんだって Yeah, it's almost like conveyor belting like pop idols where she would eventually get out of fashion, I guess, and then on to the next person. Kind of, yeah, like a conveyor belt marketing. Instead of staying relevant for your craft, you get produced as a product. So they're trying to make a new. Charm group, and I don't think it's doing as well as what they were when the original group were. It's kind of like basically every group. So there's the old creep, I guess. That's who they had, yeah, that's right, they had a little argument before. So, yeah, she's all paranoid to travel now. She should not even use public transport, to be honest. Especially if she's becoming a big star. Or at least hire, like, security to walk with you or someone. Right, that was one of her bandmates, right? A creepy shot, too. See, so she's getting replaced, and they're succeeding, and she's failing, so she's gonna get even more anxiety and stressed out from that. And then people are gonna just creep around with her even more. What? I forgot about that. She has to. I probably have to cut that word out. She has to. Get, she gets assaulted in the film, I guess. It's probably the most lenient way to say that. Right, they're using that as an excuse of this will be a break away from her singing career. Yeah, but it's going to ruin your, your image. She should really get out of public transport though. Yeah, maybe check that there's no weirdos here. That's gotta be weird to film this shit, right? Surely. That's gotta be so awkward to watch, though. And that weirdo is gonna be here filming, isn't he? What kind of movie is this, though, that they're doing? They're gonna do it again, take two. There you go, it's going. The insanity has become. Psychological traumas happen too. Is just in his basement fantasizing over her, <laughs> writing fan fiction. <laughs> the psychological torment's insane in this, though. She's completely losing her mind and reading this shit.
I also assume this might be also a commentary of, obviously, Japan back in the 90s, how they viewed uh, teen pop idols, I guess. Well, actually, it's kind of... Yeah, it's kind of the same thing here, I guess, where people don't want them to grow up and get out of that phase. I think this is the director, right? Or producer? I think it is, yeah. He's probably behind you, right? Brutal. Absolutely brutal. Yeah, she's just completely lost it now. Yeah, it's pretty obvious that it is. She's just gonna open it, walk out the car like that. Right, so that's her old manager, right? And that, uh, that creepy guy's not gonna like this because he wants her more innocent, I guess, in a weird way. Oh no, he just bought them all? Okay. What the hell? How much memorabilia does this man need? This also reminds me of, like, uh, the mid-90s, like, erotic thriller horror movies that were booming. I still think this is probably the best one because it has the commentary on idols and all that. But yeah, this was in that same kind of cesspool year of just all those weird erotic thriller movies. It's not illusions, it's more psychotic breakdown. Her doing this film is not helping because it's still a. It's actually becoming a real life for her. Like the lines she has in the movies is eerily similar to what she's going through. Chasing after no one, she's just gonna look psychotic doing this. Careful. And it had to be him in the truck as well. That's the problem though, but she doesn't like what she's become. And that's also a pretty big topic in this film. Yeah, but get off that shit. Yeah, she's completely lost it. And this idiot's just still here. She's like warped into a mental prison as well. She's just having breakdown after breakdown. And yeah, it's just becoming an endless loop for her. <laughs> it's like hallucinating as well. Kind of like Fight Club where the narrator was having... Well, he basically wasn't sleeping. He was having insomnia and he thought just the days were repeating. Right, so that's the movie. And she can't... 
tell the difference between this movie and her real life because it's all correlating the same. Yeah, I want to trust that. He just got stabbed right in the eye. <laughs> Brutal. Classic shot there. Classic. Did she kill this person or not? And that's left to be seen, but she's completely losing it, living a double life. Kind of again, like Fight Club. So it's the same knife as the screenwriter, so it eludes that she's the one killing and she's just completely lost her mind. Yep. <laughs> Was this just at the front door? She needs better security. Mm. Right, see, it's mimicking what she's already done. So she's gonna have that trauma again. <laughs> Almost like Groundhog Day too, but a much more psychological horror version. Mm. Yeah. I, I just love this, uh some mind bending. Such a psychological twist, just she doesn't know what's real or fake anymore. So it's done basically, and she just can't even comprehend what's going on. Here we go. Why has she not been with security at all throughout this whole movie? Like, she's a big star, she should be with security. <laughs> right, so now this is about going to become a reality. Yeah. Stab him. Surely the people out there can hear this. I mean, it shouldn't be. Oh, it probably is soundproof because it's an actual studio, isn't it? Exactly like the film, pretty much. Such a trip, this movie. Seriously. I just love how you don't know what's real or what's not. You're just sitting here, you don't know what's going on. But in a good way. Just... So much great uh, detail with the psychology in this movie too. You don't know if she's the killer. You don't know if that weirdo taking films is. You you kind of just stuck in what the hell's going on. Because everything just feels like a really muddled time loop. Right, he died, right? 
Or is he about to die now? Okay, there we go. <laughs> He's dead. With that other guy too. Okay. That's right. Right. That mirror shot is amazing though. She doesn't know who she's seeing. <laughs> Alright, look at that. The illusion's breaking basically. Such a haunting shot, even the way she moves. This psycho is gonna jump. <laughs> the soundtrack's so good too, with the humming in the background. It's gotta be one of my favorite anime scores as well. Akira and Bebop as well. There we go. Such an odd and haunting stabbing as well. The car. Such a good shot. Almost like American Psycho 2, with like the Mask of Sanity, that whole conversation Patrick Bateman had. I mean, some people still speculate if that was real or not with the murders. I tend to say that it was because the book says it is and the director said that it went by the book. But this has that similar feel of who's the killer, who's not the killer, what's real and what's not real. I just love psychological films like this. Multiple personality disorder. It was uh, 1997's Perfect Blue. I again, I, I love these movies. Uh, it has really held up and again, it's still a very good message for even today's world. Uh, obviously the internet stuff was fairly new back then, so not particularly that, but the whole concept of Teen Idol and uh, kind of growing out of that and also obsessive fans and all that to <laughs> borderline psychos. Uh, I, I love the whole message of this movie and also the cinematography, yes, it's animated, but it's still really, really good. And yeah, that's about it. There's nothing much more to add because uh, I think the the title says itself. Uh, it is pretty much perfect of a film. Uh, there's no real negatives, I would say, at all. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today. If you guys did enjoy this, make sure you like and sub. And I'll see you in the next one.